from Party Foul in Murfreesboro, here's Blue Raider Extra Point. Welcome to Blue Raider Extra Point. I'm Abigail Martin, joined as always by Chase Owens and with Will Stevenson. We're back at Party Foul in Murfreesboro on another college game day morning, ready to give you all the Conference USA and MTSU Blue Raider info. Let's kick it off. First up, we have Nathan Vaughn in the starting lineup. The starting lineup. Control of the Big Ten's playoff spot will be on the line Saturday as undefeated Indiana heads to Columbus for a matchup against Ohio State. The Hoosiers have been one of the biggest surprises in the Big Ten this season and are coming off dominant wins over Michigan and Michigan State in the last two weeks. Michael Penix has been outstanding on offense, but the Hoosiers have been feasting on opposing turnovers in the last few weeks. Meanwhile, for Ohio State, the Hoosiers may be the only roadblock in their way to the Big Ten championship game. The Buckeyes have been unstoppable this season with Justin Fields and a treasure trove of talented skill players pouring on the points. Ohio State are massive favorites, but can Indiana pull off the upset of the year? Speaking of the playoffs and the Big Ten, fellow unbeaten Wisconsin and Northwestern will duke it out as well on Saturday for sole control of the West Division of the conference. Despite COVID setbacks, Graham Mertz and the Badgers ran all over a downtrodden Michigan team last week en route to a massive blowout victory. Wisconsin has dreams of another conference championship berth, but will need to overthrow the conference's other big surprise in the Wildcats of Northwestern. The perennial nerds of the Big Ten, Northwestern hit the weights in the offseason clearly and have morphed into a wall of a defense that is handling business so far in 2020. This is the Cats' biggest challenge on the road to Indianapolis. Can Peyton Ramsey and company pull off the upset? And finally, Bedlam has come back for another year of wild and unpredictable offensive explosions as Oklahoma and Oklahoma State face off. Oklahoma State has hit a lot of road bumps in the last few weeks, including a heartbreak loss to Texas two weeks ago. Now, after just surviving K-State, the Pokes face a team they have lost five in a row and 13 of the last 15 to in the series in the Sooners. Oklahoma, meanwhile, has only improved after a torrid start to start 2020. Spencer Radler and company have started to develop some chemistry, which led to a 62-9 smoke show of Kansas last week. The Big 12 is all but out of playoff contention, but a win for either team would keep them in the hunt for a conference title. Thanks, Nathan, and Week 12's here, and it's given us some good games. Absolutely. Chase, what are your can't-miss games for today? Start out with you, I got a top 10 matchup in the Big 10. We got Indiana taking on Ohio State. Indiana, very impressive, 3-0 on the year already, taking on Michigan and Penn State, knocked them both off, and then Ohio State, as good as they are, and you know, as good as Justin Fields, and this is still a battle between top 10 teams, and anything can happen. And then I've also got another one for you guys. Not the matchup, because it's not as great as people thought it would be at the beginning of the year, but we got Oklahoma State taking on Oklahoma in the Bedlam series. Oklahoma leads that series 89 wins to only 18 losses and one tie. Seems like all major college football series have a tie somewhere. But those games are going to be exciting to watch, and I'm looking forward to it. Absolutely. Thanks, Chase. We have to take a quick break, but when we come back, we'll have the Big Blue Review. Stay tuned for more on Blue Raider Extra Point. And we're back on Blue Raider Extra Point. I'm Abigail Martin alongside Chase Owens and with Willis Stevenson. Let's send it over to Noah Boffin with this week's Big Blue Review. The Big Blue Review. Welcome back. And no token party this time as we find ourselves right next to our lucky blue horseshoe and for a strictly business trip as we head down to Troy, Alabama to, for the Battle of Palladium 2.0. But before we do that, let's take a look back at last week as we suffered a tough loss against the Marshall Thundering Herd. The 15th ranked Herd came into the game playing for those 75 that died on that tragic plane crash just 50 years ago. At the half, it still was anyone's game as Marshall only led 21 to seven. Our Blue Raiders were hanging in there. But in the third quarter, the Marshall Thundering Herd put up 21 points to our seven with a final score of 42 to 14 as they completely dominated the rest of the game. But now we turn our focus to the Battle of Palladium 2.0. We took a party a little too hard last time so we had to go back to our roots, go back to the Blue Horseshoe, get us some good luck. And it's strictly a business trip now as we head down to Troy, Alabama for the Battle of play 2.0. Last week here at the Big Blue Review, we decided to give Marshall all the respect that they need for the significance of that special plane crash day. 
It's a very hard day for them, so we didn't feel it was right to mention anything else that was going on here on campus. But our Blue Raiders did have National Signing Day last week, and we signed some pretty big names. So a big Blue Review shout out to all the student athletes that signed with all of our Blue Raider athletics. Now, goodbye from Walnut Grove and the Horseshoe. That's all the time we have for now. See you next week. Back to y'all. Thanks, Noah. Much more to come on Blue Raider Extra Point. Coming up after the break, we're going to take you around this USA. And Houston Chapman gets served again in this week's Blue Raider Spotlight. And we got something special coming up for you guys later with the picks. I hope my grades aren't impacted too much by it. <laughs> Stick around for more Blue Raider Extra Point. You're watching Blue Raider Extra Point. Welcome back to Blue Raider Extra Point. We're here at Party Foul in Murfreesboro and we want to thank them for being such a great host. Chase, I know you're so excited for this one. It's week 12 of CUSA football. Go ahead and take us around the CUSA. Well, at this point, you guys know the drill. The first game we'll start you guys off with is FIU taking on Western Kentucky. FIU not having the season. You know, they're 0-4 on the year. Had to cancel some games because of the corona. And WKU picked to win the conference before the season even started. And they're just on a down year. The other game for you guys is actually MTSU taking on Troy. Battle of the Palladium 2.0. Actually, the first time in history that these two teams have played each other twice in the same season. We've been hearing all season, go Miners. They take a loss one time and you're taking them out of around the CUSA? Well, for sure. We don't talk about losers in around the CUSA. <laughs> around the CUSA. Florida International was never going to be anyone's choice to dominate Conference USA, but at 0-4, they haven't really played anybody particularly well this year. Against FAU, though, the Panthers did not look too bad and had some early third down stops and were going toe-to-toe -to -toe with FAU until the Owls put on two touchdowns in the fourth quarter. Devontae Price has been the lone bright spot for the Panthers as he averages 120 yards a game, 8 yards a carry, and one touchdown per game. WKU does give up 180 yards rushing per game, and Price might be able to keep the Panthers in it. Western Kentucky is the opposite of FIU as they actually were picked by some to win their side of the conference. But the three and six on the year and two and three in the conference, it doesn't look like that's going to happen. But they come into this week's game with a huge chance to win. They allow 112 less yards of offense and are one of the better passing defenses in the country. If they can limit Price and the Panthers rushers, Western should walk away from this one handedly. It's not the same team since they took on Troy the first time. Since that game, MTSU has played six games. In those six games, MTSU has scored 28 or more four times, Asher has only had one game go for under 280 all-purpose yards, and the offense is clicking in a way that it wasn't earlier in the year. They are coming off of a loss to Marshall, and when the Raiders have lost this season, it's been in bunches. MTSU has got to start fast against this Troy team unless they want to repeat what happened in Week 2. They've got to get Asher going and get some stops, and we should see what the Raiders can do this week. Troy has had one of the most explosive offenses in the country as they average 30 points a game and over 400 yards of offense. If they didn't have such a poor showing against BYU back in the second game of the year, then those numbers would be even higher. Jacob Free has had to take over the offense the past two weeks as Gunnar Watson, the team's starting quarterback, went down with a rib injury. It is still unsure whether or not he will play this week, but if he does, Watson had been playing so well before going down with the injury, he had 10 touchdowns and 1,160 yards through the year. Either way, this week, the Troy offense is looking forward to an MTSU defense that gives up a near 500 yards of total offense. Thanks, Chase. And now here's the full lineup of all the Conference USA games for this weekend. Enough about football for now. Let's go ahead and take it to Houston Chapman with this week's Blue Raider Spotlight. What's 
up, Blue Raiders? I'm Houston Chapman here with Kayla. Kayla, tell me a little about yourself. Hi guys, I'm Kayla Henley. I'm a right side on the volleyball team and I'm a sophomore. So you said you're from Myrtle Beach. Uh, what brought you here to Murfreesboro? Um, volleyball, of course. And then once that happened, I fell in love with the school. It's also a lot colder in Tennessee. So how's the offseason going so far? Um, it's going good. We're just working on running a smoother offense right now. Now, what does it take to be a good right side player? Um, you need to have a high elbow and a good drive step. So how long have you been playing volleyball? Since the fourth grade. Since fourth grade? All right, well, I've been playing for the last few years and I think I've gotten a lot better. I think I could beat you in a few drills. What do you think? Let's see. All right, let's find out. Kayla went first and all of her passes were on target. Then it was my turn and it didn't go so well. I was able to get a few successful passes. Then, I tried to dig out some spikes. And as you can see, it didn't go well. I was able to get one over, and it was one of the best moments of my life. But, I tried to return some more, and I ended up on my back. So, as you can see, I was not able to redeem myself in volleyball today. I tried to return some passes, and most of them didn't hit the mark. I did get one, I was excited about that. And then also, when I was trying to dig out some spikes, I was not able to get any of those. But here's the thing, I've had a great time today. If you want to check out Kayla and the rest of the Blue Raider volleyball team, you can check them out on social media. And tune in next week for the next Blue Raider Spotlight. You know, Will, as tall as Houston is, I expected them to be better at volleyball. And that makes them 0-2 against volleyball players this year. Well, either way, we have got to get to break. When we come back, we've got more Blue Raider Extra Point. Time for more Blue Raider Extra Point. Welcome back. MTSU is set to face Troy this week for round two of the Battle of the Palladium. Let's send it over to Henry Frazier for this week's scouting report. This week, MTSU will be playing Troy for the second time this season. Two teams meeting in the regular season hasn't happened since Liberty played New Mexico State in 2018. MTSU went into the last game against Troy with high hopes as the Palladium was on the line. We will see that again this week as MTSU tries to take it back. One thing MTSU needs to really step up against Troy is their run game as they were only able to get 87 rushing guards. They need to keep the ball carrier safe as well. They had 5 tackles for a loss and a sack that resulted in a safety. As well, Asher O'Hara was pulled early in the game in the second half due to allowing 3 interceptions. The Blue Raiders need to score a lot more in this game as they were only able to get 2 touchdowns and that created a 47-14 loss. Now back with Blue Raider Extra Point. Thanks, Henry. And now with his scouting report in mind, what are some keys to succeed for MTSU this week? To succeed, MTSU has got to forget about the first time these two teams played each other. You are not the same team that you were when you lost to Troy 47-14 to back in Week 2, and you need to know that. Number two, you've got to find the rhythm early. This is your first time playing games in back-to-back -back weeks since October 10th and 17th, and you've got to be able to carry one game's momentum into the next. And then lastly, you've got to hold on to the football. On this season, MTSU is averaging two turnovers a game, and that is not acceptable. Against Troy, the last time these two teams played, they had three, and that's why they lost so bad. If you want to bring the Palladium back, keep the football in your offense's hands. I agree with you, Chase, and my first key is we need to want to win. This is our second meeting with Troy this season, and we all know that it didn't go so well in week two. We're coming off of a harsh, a harsh loss to Marshall, but we have one more chance to bring the Palladium back to campus. Want it and go get it. My second key is bring back our offense. Offense used to be the only thing clicking for us, and Troy didn't get to see that last, uh, earlier this season. We only had 240 total yards against them, and our offense is better than that, and we need to prove it. My third key is finish strong. This is our last out-of-conference game, and we haven't done too well against non-CUSA teams this season. Let's get a big win so that we can finish the season off with another win against FAU. Chase, I really like that you said that this team is not the same team that they were earlier when they did face Troy, and it leads right into my first key. Take back your own words. 
These two teams met in September with Troy taking the Palladium back over a 47-14 victory in Week 2. Coach Stockstool said after the game that they weren't a lot of positives to talk about and they aren't a good offensive team right now. My second key, step up and put the pieces together. All around, this requires the best game yet. Troy statistically has MTSU covered except in rushing yards thanks to Asher O'Hara. We've said all year that there's a need for better coaching, individual play, offense, defense, penalties, all of those. Time to put it together. Defense must find and maintain the control for the offense to run. Key number three, it's simple. Bring back the Palladium. You put it all together and you put the Palladium back in the hands of the Blue Raiders. That's right, and those are some great keys, and if MTSU sticks to that, the Palladium will be ours. We've got to head to break. When we get back, we've got our picks on Blue Raider Extra Point. Welcome back to Blue Raider Extra Point. It's about time to get in our picks, but before we do that, I have to mention our special guest, Dr. Taylor. Dr. Taylor, it's so nice to see you outside of the classroom, and thank you so much for being here. Oh, thanks for having me. Let's go ahead and get in our picks for this week. First up, we have FIU and WKU. Okay, well, Western Kentucky's got Piggy T, Tyrell Pigrom at quarterback. He's a Maryland transfer, Maryland's home for me, so I'm going with the toppers. I am too. I'm going WKU. I love the nickname that he just gave him, Piggy T. <laughs> I love the toppers as well. Can't believe I'm saying it, but I have WKU as well. Rice and North Texas. Well, these two teams have a common opponent in MTSU. MTSU beat Rice, lost to North Texas. So, Will, I'm with you on Team Mean Green this week. I think we need to have you on every week. I'm going Mean Green too. And because it will impact my grade, I will also go with the Mean Green. <laughs> <laughs> if we're all supporting Will this week, I'm going North Texas. UTSA and Southern Miss. UTSA put up 600 yards of offense. That was a school record. Who was that against, Chase? Go Miners. <laughs> <laughs> I think they stay hot and get the W again this week. I've got them also. They're coming off a good win, so I'm going with the Roadrunners. Not only are they coming off a win, Southern Miss is actually coming off a loss, so I'll also go with the Roadrunners. I have UTSA. Last up, round two for the Battle of the Palladium, MTSU and Troy. Well, we've got a, a rematch, and it's only the third time since 1999 that this has happened in Division One to have a regular season rematch. A lot of room to make up for MTSU, and I think they'll do better, but I don't see them getting the win. I'm going Troy on this one. I'd like to see the Palladium come back to Murfreesboro, but I think Troy's just too strong for us, so I'm going with Troy. I think Troy's a really tough opponent. I think MTSU has gotten really good as the season has gone on, but I'm also going with the Trojans. I have Troy as well. Check out Blue Raider Extra Point on Instagram and Twitter. So for those of you that don't know, actually Professor Taylor is a former Big East basketball player. You played at Rutgers, right? That's correct. Can you kind of describe what that was like? It was surreal. So when I was in high school, my first two years, I didn't try out for the JV basketball team because I didn't think I was good enough to play. Uh, so to be playing at the Big East several years later was a whole nother level. Um, but I went to college and I figured that if they were going to say no as a walk-on, I had to try out. So if they're going to say no, they were going to have to do it four times. They did it three, but on the fourth time they gave in and, and had me on the squad. Heck yeah. Now I want to ask you, going from playing in the Big East for a pretty basketball heavy conference, what's it, what was the decision to switch to academics after you left there? Well, you know, I was proud. I was a Big East scholar athlete uh, my senior year. And um, so once I got into grad school, it gave me kind of a similar motivation. Uh, when I was in an undergrad at Rutgers, I had that goal that drove me every single day. It got me out of bed. It's all I thought about uh, when I got up and when I went to sleep at night. And so afterwards, I needed something else big. Uh, and that thing wound up being grad school. And uh, the, I can remember the first semester I was in my PhD program. Uh, I was preparing for a class beforehand. And I actually sat back and laughed to myself because I thought, this is just like basketball, except no one's yelling at me all the time. I can do this in <laughs> peace. So in a lot of ways, it was easier. There you go. Well, Dr. Taylor, thank you so much for being here this week. We really appreciate it. Yeah, thanks for having me. I enjoyed it. Unfortunately, that is all the time we have here today on Blue Raider Extra Point. Thank you so much to Party Fowl of Murfreesboro for being our host. And don't forget to catch us every Saturday morning right here on True Blue TV on Channel 9 at 1030. Don't forget, follow us on Twitter and Instagram. We want to hear from you. And if you missed any of this episode or any of our past episodes, you can check those out on our website at middletennesseenews.net. Thank you for watching. Have a great weekend. So, were those picks on your notes or were those digs? Because that was, that was I mean, you wrote a full page. This is <laughs> 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 <laughs>
Ready to go. So I came prepared, so maybe I'll be the 